Squarespace sponsored this video. Previously on 10 hundred. Playing cards, man. I think they've taken over my life. My life. I just feel like every decision that I'm making is like the total wrong one. Wrong one. If diamonds are the suit of riches, the riches that I want to portray are the stories that connect us all. As the project keeps getting like bigger and bigger in my head, it also becomes like more and more overwhelming. And here is the 10 of spades. spades. Why is every card in the diamonds like so difficult for me? This suit is the hardest one yet. Is there something that I can do on those number cards to make them special but not make them like outshine the face cards? Diamonds are done. Now we just have the spades left. Man, this project just keeps getting bigger and bigger. We back. Playing card video number four. With each new video comes more comments from you guys, more input on this project as we collaborate together to make the coolest deck of cards possible. You know, one of you guys suggested, I'm 10 hundred, I gotta make the 10 card special. Brilliant idea, so I had the 10 of hearts, 10 of diamonds, 10 of clubs, all kind of logo-esque, and then the 10 of spades was a little bit different. And that card seemed to be divisive. Some of you said it was like your absolute favorite. Some of you were like, that doesn't match with the rest of them, but, I have a secret sneaky plan with that 10 of spades. So just bear with me. If you keep watching this video, you will find out in just a moment what my plans are. Now, I think we're getting to the point where the balance between playability and art and design and aesthetics is kind of being met. You guys keep making suggestions about like, maybe each suit should have a different color background. I don't particularly want to do that. You know, there's the red suits, there's the black suits in a traditional deck of cards. But you were saying like, what if the diamonds were orange? orange and the hearts were another color and then the spades were another color on top of that and then the clubs were another color on top of that and I just think that we're getting to the point where we're like overproducing it like when you hold cards in your hand like this all that you're looking at is like this top little corner the rest of like what they actually look like when you actually play is it that important this is what's important and I think we've resolved that issue now some of you folks were saying that the orange rectangle in the background is too similar to the orange used in the foreground it doesn't have have the contrast it doesn't pop as hard so you were saying maybe try like a darker orange more of like a red blood orange or something like that so let's try it out if we take this and just make this a bit more of a blood orange that's an option mm, I don't know what do you guys think of that before after before after let's check it out on the Queen of Diamonds mm-hmm after before after who knows? <laughs> what if we tried putting this next to all the other cards? Okay, so here's all my cards put together. So if we pop in the blood orange ones. Okay, so now that you see them all next to each other, does it pop out a bit more? Yes, no, maybe so. I'm gonna put a poll out on my community tab right now that just says blood orange background. Yes, no, and you can cast your vote. What else do we have? A lot of you folks are saying I should be the Joker. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with the Jokers yet. There's been a lot of wild suggestions for the Jokers right now. I'm still pondering on that. But first, I gotta jump into the spades, our final suit. So now, the 10 hundred custom playing card epic saga continues. Here we go. When I start a new piece of art, I oftentimes will find myself writing out a list of words that will act as the inspiration for what the piece will become. When it came time to start the spades, I scribbled down some words like dark, mysterious, magic, sneaky, masks, as simple notes for the tone that I was trying to achieve with this suit. As far back as I can remember, inside my own head, I've always assigned kind of personality traits to each of the suit of cards. I don't know why. It's something that I do with a lot of things, even like numbers and letters and colors. To me, the spades have always been kind of the dark suit, the edgy suit, the cool suit, a little bit scary, a little bit sexy. So that's how I see the spades in my deck too. I've been struggling on so many of these cards, but this jack of spades is actually just like flowing out of me really easy. It's like a drink of cool water to actually just kind of feel like I'm nailing it on one of these cards. Ever since I started this project, I think the spades are the suit I've been looking forward to the most.
All the warm and fuzzy feelings I was feeling with the Jack of Spades are long gone. This Queen of Spades, I've restarted her like three times already. Just when I thought I was getting on a roll, the Queen of Spades just rears its ugly head. I mean ugly head literally, I keep redrawing this face, it's so ugly. When I started this project, I envisioned it going a lot smoother than it has so far. A lot of these cards have given me more than their fair share of trouble. In my head, I'm like, oh, I want to get these videos out as quick as possible. I want to get this project done. I want it to be epic, and I want to get it into my fans' hands. When the art doesn't cooperate, I have to slow down, focus on what I'm doing, put in the work, and just keep grinding until I get the results I want. All right, the Jack and the Queen of Spades are complete. I can't wait to show you guys what I've done. Let's take a look. <laughs> I gotta take these off. These are not prescription. I can't see a thing. So, Photoshop, the Jack of Spades. Very dark, very mysterious, very androgynous. Now, the Jack of Spades is another one of our famous one-eyed jacks. So, the way that I chose to depict the one-eyed jack in this one is that there's one real eye showing of the actual character. The other eye is being represented by this 10 of spades card. Honestly, this might be my favorite card I've done so far, which probably means that it's absolutely none of you guys' favorite card. Because as an artist, whenever a piece of art is like my favorite, that's the one that people don't really care about. And then we got the queen of spades. Mmm, even more mysterious, spooky magicalness in the dark side of the spade life. Now, while you guys weren't watching, I was delving into the world of the actual number cards, and I have a few options I want to show you. Let's start simple. I mean, I just remade a pretty classic layout. I decided to go with the six card, just try out a bunch of different sixes, and then that would kind of be my guide. Six of spades, six of hearts. Then we start moving into some other stuff. This is the six of spades and the six of hearts playing off of the stripe motif. Then there's another option. This one is more abstract, more geometric, more avant-garde. So there's that option. Then. You guys said I should just make each of them like different little icons, 10 hundred icons. So here's one kind of playing around with a crown as an icon. A lot of you guys were suggesting that I do spray cans. So here's one doing the spray can thing. The only thing that puts me on the fence a little bit about the spray can thing is that like all of my, you know, kings and queens and jacks are very sort of old timey, medieval, just old, old, old stuff. And like a spray can is not old, it's very modern. So it is throwing in that modern element, throw off the theme of the deck. And then I was playing around with this one where we have this little guy interacting with the pips. I'm super feeling this one. I got an email from a fan. Uh, he was talking about there's like actually a tradition within playing cards of like things interacting with the pips and I can't find the email and I can't remember what it's called, but I was already kind of planning on doing a, a number card that explored this theme, but then he showed me like it's a whole thing and I was like, whoa, this is inspiring. And this is cool. I was thinking if I went with this route that the hearts could all have this little guy in his teal tunic and maybe the clubs could have a different little guy and the spades could have a different little guy and it could just be all these little fun little dudes interacting with the pips. So that's an option too. And then if we take a look at all the cards put together, the deck is starting to shape up here. So let's zoom in a little bit on these sixes that I made and you guys can see them all together. Maybe that'll give you a different feel. What do you guys think of the different options for the six? I'm gonna put a poll out about these sixes. So we'll call the plain vanilla ones option one on the poll. We'll call the stripey ones option two on the poll, okay? So if you like pretty traditional, vote one. If you like the stripey, vote two. The avant-garde, geometric, crazy ones, we'll call three. If you like that, vote three. Doing each card with a little bit of like iconography, we'll vote four. And the drawing characters interacting with the pips themselves will label as number five. So you guys, let me know what you think of these options. You can also let me know down in the comments, like do you think the spray cans are too modern and don't fit with the rest of the deck? Should I only go with like old timey iconography if we're gonna go with that route? Do you have any other good ideas for the number cards that I'm not thinking of? But now it's time for me, hold on. Let's get back into character here. 
Now it's time for me to design the king and the ace of spades, and at that point we'll be completely done with all of our court cards, our face cards, and we can move into other aspects of this crazy big project. So, time for me to bring this home on the court cards. Here we go. I was seeing the finish line in sight when it came to the court cards. And in my mind, I was already getting excited to start working on, you know, the jokers and the tuck case art and the other art aspects of this project. But I had to remember not to put the cart before the horse and bring it home strong on these face cards. After doing so many individual pieces of art for this deck of cards, it becomes more and more difficult to try and think of unique ideas. But on the flip side of that, I've already done so much work on this deck of cards that if I ever feel lost on where to go, I can look at the aesthetic of the cards that I've done so far and keep pushing in that direction. I think this King of Spades is a good balance between trying something new and sticking to the look I've already created. I knew on this deck I wanted the Ace of Spades to be special. Some of you folks gave me some awesome feedback in the comments saying that on the other aces, I took the pip and did an art mashup on them, but on this one, I should invert that and use the negative space to fill with my art. Traditionally, the Ace of Spades is considered the death card, and it was super fun to be able to play around with the iconography and illustration style of all these different death motifs. I'm trying to figure out how to make my Ace of Spades special and stand out, but still keep that balance of fitting in with the rest of the deck. Hey. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one dynamic platform to help you build a beautiful website. Whether you're an artist, designer, filmmaker, or freaking cardistry expert, you can build a beautiful website. With Squarespace's beautiful award-winning templates, it's super easy. You just take your content, drop it into their amazing templates, and boom, you got a website. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to be an HTML guru with Squarespace. It's super easy. I've been using Squarespace for years and years to host my online portfolio and run my online shop. It's how I sell my merch and get it into you guys' hands. If I can do it, you can do it. But if you ever do run into any issues, they have 24-7 customer support. It certainly helped me out of a few issues in the past. So what are you waiting for? It's time for you to have a beautiful website. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your site, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash 10 hundred for 10% off the first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. I have done some things. Let's take a look. King of Spades. Ooh, baby. Very mysterious, very magical type of fellow. His cloak kind of has like the cycles of the moon. There's some like hieroglyphics going on in there. And then that brings us to our Ace of Spades. So this is what I created. And I have this like kind of gold foil texture here that I just got off of like the internet as like a placeholder. But I was thinking to make the Ace of Spades even more special, it would be cool if we used gold foil printing on the big main pip and then the A and the small pip. Originally when I designed it, I was thinking, hold on, let me get rid of these colors here. I was thinking of just doing it with like the straight up line art like this. I thought that was really cool, kind of graphic illustratory style and another thing that would just differentiate the Ace of Spades even more. But then I looked at it with the rest of the deck like this and it seemed like really, really, really different from the entire rest of the deck. So I tried it out with the colors and that definitely kind of ties it in with the theme of the deck a little bit more. I don't know. It's just a couple couple different aesthetic choices. Do you guys like the color with the gold foil printing more? The just line art with the gold foil printing more? And then the third option I was thinking, you know, I was a little bit worried about how the actual foil printing works. I need to email United States Playing Card Company and see if they can bump the foil printing like right up against traditional ink printing. Is that gonna be too precise of a print job for foil? So the other option is if we can't use the foil, just having the white negative space 
space, like all the colors around it. And then just the negative space is like super popping as well. So even if we can't do that foil printing thing, or if you guys don't necessarily like the gold foil for some reason, I think that looks super strong and super popping as well. So I guess I'm gonna have to do another pull. We have the blood orange background pull. We have the number card, like the six card pull. And now we have the ace of spades pull. Hopefully the YouTube algorithm doesn't get mad at me for putting out so many polls on one day. <laughs> I guess in order to counteract that, you guys should definitely like and subscribe and comment to this video because you know we got to combat any kind of maybe unforeseen negative effects that might have on the algorithm. Thank you. Oh, I also brought in the blood orange background on all the rest of the diamonds and all the rest of the hearts so we have a little bit more cohesive picture of what it would look like with the blood orange background going on. Let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know any other thoughts you guys have. It's been so awesome collaborating with you on this project. I never would have imagined you guys would have given me so many awesome ideas that would have drastically changed the trajectory of how this amazing project is going. Thank you guys so much for supporting this video series. It was a huge risk for me to put out the first one and be like, this is gonna be a series like what if that first video had just like tanked super hard I would have been committed to just like making crummy videos that you guys don't want to see but you guys have like super supported this project and I really really appreciate it these cards will end up on Kickstarter I get a lot of comments being like are these available for pre-order like are they just gonna sell out immediately and it's gonna be on Kickstarter I'm not sure exactly how long Kickstarters are I think they're open for like a month so there will be a really good chunk of window for like anybody who wants to get their hands on them to get their hands on them so fear not you know what while you're waiting for these cards to come out, maybe you should check out 1000art.com. I got t-shirts and hats and hoodies and stickers and prints and all kinds of sweet stuff over there. Check out my merch. I think you like it. Ding! <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much to my patrons. You guys, mmm, coolest people on the internet. Thank you so much for your support. But now that we're done with the face cards, we get to move into the back, the jokers, the actual tuck case, the box that the cards come in. And I think now is when the real fun begins. All right, y'all. I'm 1000. I'll catch you on the next one. Playing cards!